Today I'm with my nine-year-old grandson, Owen, and we're going to be demonstrating the Model 1000 LP rifle rest with the recoil system. We're going to be using two firearms. I'm going to be shooting off, he's going to be shooting off a 375 h and h then the next one will be a 458 Winchester Magnum. The loads we're going to be using will be absolute maximum loads, and there is no muzzle brake on the firearms. So the first up is a 375 h and h with a 270 grain bullet. Again, it will be a maximum load. Okay, one's live. Remember, up front and a good grip. Okay. Super good grip up there and a good follow through. Okay, this time we got the 458 Winchester Magnum. And what we have here, we got a 400 grain bullet, and there again we have a maximum load. Again, there is no muzzle brake uh, on the firearm, so we're going to set it down. There. Okay. Remember up front. Super good grip. Super good grip up front. Follow through. Okay, folks, I remember when I first mentioned to my grandson Owen about shooting the 458 Winchester Magnum, and I showed him the case and how he just thought that was a little bit intimidating. Uh, but, Owen, what did you uh, what did you think of that? Grandpa, I can do this all day. Okay. Well, anyway, folks, my next segment, up. I'm going to go through the uh, uh, shooting a bunch more weapons off this. And also, I'm going to demonstrate the reason why we, or how it works, and why we, why we designed it. Okay, the reason I developed the recoil system for the LP rifle rest is probably one of the first reasons would be flinch. Uh, flinch is something that I mean is so easy to develop. Matter of fact, here in Dakota, where I live, a 270 Winchester is a very popular round. Now, a 270 with a normal hunting gun will give you probably about 15 to 16 foot-pounds of recoil. Now even that type of recoil I mean, can very easily develop a flinch, and a flinch is very, very difficult to get rid of. Uh, the other reason was I wanted to have a, uh, to maintain my sight picture. I mean, when I would shoot, like my 243 that I have in here right now, I have a 243 that I use for uh, garment shooting. When you would shoot that, I mean, your scope would always raise up, and I would lose sight picture. And that's something that would just always really, really bug me and stuff. So this simply has virtually eliminated that. Uh, the other reason, it just allows for like a normal wraparound. I wanted something where I could go in there and wrap around the rifle like I normally do because I want to make sure I'm attached to the rifle. I want to pull the trigger. I want to do everything that I normally do. I, I, could, I totally forget about the recoil system even be attached to it. Uh, the other one was to eliminate, obviously, the use of all the ammo it takes to develop a load. I mean, if you're left or right, you're high or low. If you're swinch, flinching, you really don't know what's going on. Uh, and then, obviously, to working with heavier loads. Boy, I tell you what, it's it's pain it's painful to shoot some of these big calibers. And that was the other reason to be able to go out and develop loads for big caliber rifles with ease. Uh, but anyway, I want to start with the first up front here with a counterweight. Now, this counterweight weighs 19.85 pounds. It's easy attachable from the rest by two quarter inch uh, socket head cap screws. So I can easily remove it and take it off because I am going to have a case. I'm having a case developed for this where I can have a case for this and then a case for the recoil pad. And they'll be separate because they go on and off, you know, so easily. I mean, they both go on so, so easily. But the other reason for the weight is obviously it's going to reduce the recoil. Because anytime you got weight here and stuff, that's going to help in going back and reducing the recoil. But the other thing with the, the weight here is centered, perfectly centered. You always want to make sure that like when you're shooting, you like people that have a rest sometimes they might load up with sandbags to help with recoil. Well then your weight is uneven. Here it has to be dead centered so the weapon comes back or the, the rest comes back straight, I mean every time. Uh, and moving back from here, we're gonna go back to the recoil pad itself. Uh, and the amazing thing here is really the uh, Sorbethane, this is one inch sorbethane. It's 70 durometer, and that's what's absorbing 
the uh, the shock and also just it's tremendous limiting vibration. And and this is seventy durometer, one inch thick because the weapon has to have the firearm's got to come back into something that's going to have some give to it. So you never have to worry about breaking a stock. I mean that is that is a non-issue here. You never have to worry about breaking a stock, knocking out a scope or something, because this cushion. It's just like, uh, it, uh, to me, it feels almost just like a human muscle in your shoulder to where the stock is coming back into that. Now, in the back, I got a 50 durometer sorbethane for the shoulder that's going to rest up in your shoulder. It's going to, like I said, the, the recoil is just, you basically don't even feel anything. The next, the next thing that's very important is the ability to tilt this. And this is my adjustment here for that, because when I bring the stock back, See, I can tilt this, and I can get this set perfectly. I'm going to usually shoot about right there. I can adjust this anywhere I want to, and then I can simply, you know, lock that in. And it's very important to lock that in because once you shoot, you got a little bit of recoil, and you simply pull it back to the same spot, and then away you go again. And the other thing with the quick release pin, when I release this, okay, then I can slide this any position that I want with all these different holes in here. Or like I mentioned before, I can take this and I can remove it and then I can go up here and I can shoot without it. Uh, and the other thing is we have a, uh, a counterweight. We got a counterweight right here and it's also perfectly centered. This unit in the back, okay, it weighs like 15.4 pounds. So the total weight of this system ends up being at 61 pounds with the rifle rest. Now that certainly is a considerable amount of weight. Uh, is it unmanageable? Uh, no, but that's the reason we're developing a case. We're going to have a case for the counterweight up front and that this is going to fit into. And then we'll be able to take two different cases out to the range. And I think that's going to be very, very helpful. Uh, but anyway, what I'm going to do here, I want to take a, a fire a, a shot down range, and this is going to be using the 243. And I just want you to notice uh, that my crosshair and stuff, how this is absolutely going to stay on target. I'm not going to lose my sight picture. Anyway, here goes here goes a 243 100 grain bullet. Folks, I can see exactly where that bullet hit, and my crosshair is on target. And to me, that is just that is just so amazing and so fun to use. Now, the next one up, I'm going to put a 375 in here, and then I'm going to go to a 458. Okay, now I'm with my 375 H and H. And what I always do and stuff, I always bring the whip, the firearm back, and I'm going to set this. And then I want to lock it in back here with my jammer. And then this round here is going to be a 270 grain bullet. There again, it's going to be maxed out as fast as we can set it on range. Now again, I want you to pay attention to uh, the weapon, how my sight picture, I'm going to be able to see where my bullet hits. I also have a marker here which I want to show you how far the rifle rest actually moves back after it's fired. But here we go, we're going to have a 270 grain. And there again, it's going to be the maximum. Maximum load. There again, folks. I can see exactly where that bullet hit. Typically, when I shoot a 375, I get through like eight, nine rounds, and that's about all I want. But I literally could go out there and shoot prairie dogs all day long with this weapon. Now here you can see about how far it moved back. And I'm going to just guess that's probably like whatever, three quarters of an inch or a half inch, because it needs to move back. You always want to make sure that I mean, the weapon's got to move back. You just can't stop on something solid, because like I said here again, this is totally protecting the stock uh, from not breaking with the sorbethane. And, and here again. Uh, but my next one up, I'm going to be doing a 458 Winchester Magnum, and I'm going to have a 500 grain load in there, a maximum load we can put in there. Okay, now I got the 458 Winchester Mag. I have a 500 grain bullet, 
this is a maximum load we can push it out there I think we're right around 2,050 uh, feet per second out of the muzzle and again there's no there's no muzzle brake and there again I want to watch you have you watch me on my follow-through when I'm looking through the scope I'm going to be looking where that bullet hits and stuff I mean, to me, folks, that really is incredible. I mean, I had a 500 grain bullet, and I could see the spot where that bullet hit out there. Now, if you need, actually, even for folks that don't shoot big calipers, like I mentioned before, the 243, the 270s, I mean, it's just ne really neat to be able to keep that cross there on the target. Uh, but anyway, if you look for the cases coming out, like I said before, we're going to have a case for an individual case for the front uh, uh, counterweight and also for the rear assembly and stuff. And I appreciate you giving me a call at 800-611-2164.